Hey, what's up guys? It's your boy Speed here, and today we're going to be watching Tundra 9 rush a defusal blade on Pangolier, and I mean rush. He didn't go magic wand, he didn't go boots, he literally straight up rushed defusal blade. Pangolier has been a very contested hero in the pro scene as of late, the hero's win rate is also quite good, and so in today's video I wanted to cover why this hero is being picked consistently as a mid offlane flex, but actually largely being played in the mid lane, this is also something that's being played across regions, so you know it's something that obviously people believe in. Now, you might be wondering what got changed about Pangolier that made this hero a better mid laner, so let's quickly cover that. So it comes down to two main things. Number one, Swashbuckle was slightly buffed in damage. It is quite notable. It went from 78 to 85 at max. It's a pretty decent change, and yes, you will be maxing out Swashbuckle in this build. And the next thing is the change to Diffusal Blade. Diffusal Blade was about 3100 gold last patch, and now it's only 2500. This is a fantastic item on Pangolier because it gives him agility that he obviously uses well. Pangolier can auto attack in the early game and should. It gives him 10 intelligence, which is actually quite nice on a hero that generally has some mana problems and a slow. The slow might not seem like a big deal. You might be like, oh, really? A slow? You already have a built-in slow and a built-in chain stun. The thing is, the diffusal slow allows you to connect reliably on Rolling Thunder, and frankly, the slow on Shield Crash just isn't that good. It's only a three second duration, which is not nothing, but it's nothing crazy. And so Diffusal makes sure you can get off two Swashbuckles onto an opponent, which is generally going to kill them. And finally, Swashbuckle works with Mana Burn. So when you Swashbuckle someone with a Diffusal Blade, you're going to burn, I believe it is 160 mana for the swashes. If you swash through them, I believe it is then 200 mana, a very significant amount of mana in the early game, especially considering you're going to auto attack them a bunch as well. Also, I want to tell you guys that if you've been struggling with solo queue and you're looking to get to the next rank, I'm going to be able to help you. Like literally with the Game Leap website, I'm going to give you guys guides that are going to make it unbelievably clear on what you need to do. So if you've been stuck in the solo queue grind, you don't know what to do, and you want to become absolutely broken. <laughs> but like, actually, you want to become much, much better at Dota, and you want to take it more seriously, the Game Leap website is going to help you do that. So click the link down below, I'm going to help you get to the next rank, and I'll see you there. Alright, so let's get into the laning stage. The laning stage is going to be pretty simple for this hero. In general, the main idea is use your nukes to secure creeps. Pangolier doesn't really trade too well early on into the lane. You can see he does trade with Void Spirit. Against melee heroes, you can look to use Swashbuckle through them. You can even use your Shield Crash if they're inside a creep wave like this aggressively, which Nine is obviously doing here. But in the majority of matchups, be very careful about trading. Naturally, as a melee hero in the mid lane, you're at a severe disadvantage due to where the towers are. And so in general, assuming you're against a ranged hero, which most of the time you are going to be against, play generally defensive, pull a good amount of creep aggro, and for the most part, play to keep yourself alive. Use your nukes to secure creeps. You'll kill the ranged heroes later on. In the early game, they're typically going to bully you. The next thing that Nine does is he puts a pretty significant Emphasis on stacking the small camp, as we'll see him go for it here, hitting at about 155 to stack the camp into the water rune. And this is something you can do basically every single game to guarantee yourself some small camp stacks. And Pangolier is one of the best heroes in the game at clearing them, considering with your two nukes, you basically instantly clear the camp, which generally means that you're not going to miss any lane creeps. This is a good thing. Now, the next thing that was a little bit confusing to me at first, but now makes a lot of sense, is that Nine rushes the Robe of Magi. This is the intelligence component of, <laughs> of the Fusal Blade. You wouldn't necessarily expect this, right? Because it's like, oh, no. does he really need more mana pool? It's not like it gives him damage. The spell amp is negligible. What is the point of this? Well, the point is literally just to use it so you get more out of your bottle. Yeah, you heard that correct. It's just so you get more out of your bottle. And that's exactly what we see here. Every single time he's basically in a bottle from now on, it will be paired with backpacking the Robe of the Magi and his branches. And finally, the last thing I'll cover in the lane is eventually, if the lane gets hard, you should revert back to your stacks. You can see with three points in Swashbuckle and one point in Shield Crash or two points in Shield Crash, you instantly clear it through the stack. It doesn't cost you very much. And then eventually you'll bottle, right? Backpacking all the stats, bottling up, picking up a Bounty Rune and eventually even shifting to the bottom lane. And I love this rotation. This is a rotation you're going to consistently see pro players make, and it's a pick up the bounty run into that lane rotation. So obviously, if you're on Radiant, you're going to go to the top side of the map. You're going to pick up the top side bounty run, and then subsequently 
push to the left side and kill their safe lane. On Dire, you're going to go to the bot side of the map and push to the right and clean up. And that's exactly what we see here as he picks up a kill onto the Razor. Takes him out, gets the Razor, and it doesn't cost him too much. He still has a bottle charge. You know, roll isn't that long of a cooldown. It's really the perfect rotation. And after that gank, you're going to want to make your way back to the mid lane every single time. Try not to get stuck in a side lane for too long in this meta, guys. I only really recommend you gank if it's based off a bounty rune like that, or if you get like a haste rune. Sometimes invis can be good enough as well, but those are generally the times I would recommend ganking. They're at least the most reliable times. Everything else can be a little bit awkward, and if it doesn't work out, it can hardcore grief your game. Instead, he'll just go back to the mid lane, clear it out once again, off to the small camp, which you rip through, back to the mid lane, and that is why Swashbuckle is so good. On an 8 second cooldown, it allows you to just farm wave camp, wave camp, wave camp, and get a 7 minute defusal blade. You heard that correctly, a 7 minute defusal blade. So the main thing you want to do at, as Pango getting into the mid game, right, heading in towards the 8-9 minute mark, is essentially just look to fight with your team. I don't want to make it more complicated than that. However, I would like to say that once again, you are the best wave shove here in the game, or, you know, up there. And as a result, you want to consistently push in the mid lane. If you get mid tower, it's going to enable you to make a lot more plays. So in general, guys, the, your priority list should be shove in mid wave, get your farm up, get your items, and then fight and rotate. Generally, if you can clear mid and then fight and rotate, you will actually snowball. Like You'll actually get huge, where if you just gank, 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 one wrong gank and your game is just not great. It's actually quite bad usually. And you're probably gonna lose your mid tower. So just try to play how Mickey does here. He really put an emphasis with the help of his Beastmaster on Pugna on controlling the mid lane area. After that, he's gonna look to just bully heroes around mid. Obviously, if nothing was mid, he will shift to the side lanes and look for kills. And I love the play that he makes here. He has no problem committing Rolling Thunder for a kill on his support, it's totally fine. After that, he's going to roll through to the top lane, sees a little bit of vision on the Razor, thinks maybe there's a potential kill, ends up not being the case. However, it doesn't really matter. In fact, Matuma Man, who's the Razor here, thinks he can kill the Pangolier. It's like, oh, you know, this guy has no Rolling Thunder. Maybe we have a chance to kill him. My uh, Void Spirit's also TPing in. This is the thing about Pango. Your hero is incredibly good at being a nuisance, and you should really try to push your limits every single time you play a hero like Pango or Storm or Void Spirit. Just don't be afraid to take some risks. As long as you're not diving into five heroes and you're instead isolating 1v1s that you can be a real nuisance in, as we'll see here, hops onto Matuma Man, swashbuckles through. Look at his mana pool. Oh my god. Right? Well, look at it from the start, right? His mana pool was fine. He's vibe, you know, like it's not, it's fine. Gets gone on here, one Q and a little bit of mana burn. He has like nothing left. Pops the defusal as well, right? Then uses the active to disengage, forces a void spirit TP. And that's just a huge play. Completely opening up the bottom side of the map for Tiny, giving some vision for the Pugna and Beastmaster to potentially make a play. Just very well done overall. One thing I would like to say as well is when you go a build like this, you gotta be a little bit careful. You know, if the enemy team has good brawling heroes, you don't really man up 1v1 too well as you have no points and lucky shots, so no disarm will come out. Uh, but one thing to note about this is that you can still throw out Swashbuckle. So you see as Aurora comes out here, it's a really nice Swashbuckle onto two, completely burning the mana pool of the Razor, dropping Mars into a bit of an uncomfortable position. Thankfully, he has a lot of mana items this game. Um, but yeah, you can see he's really trying to play the outside of the fight, not over committing here because he just has no Rolling Thunder, so he's got to be a little bit careful. But Drops the defusal onto the Mars, allowing him to close the gap for eventual shield crash, hops in with a swashbuckle, and picks up the kill. And now, for what I would argue is probably the more important part for actually getting better and gaining MMR on a hero like Pango, is once the fight ends, see what he does. He quickly identifies that the Jakiro and the Dazzle are no longer a kill, so without hesitation, he heads to the mid lane, clears it, gets filled up by Pugna, which is beautiful, kills the small camp, back to the mid lane, just really getting his farm up, getting towards his level 10 talent, which by the way, he takes mana regen, clearly just wanting to be able to farm a lot this game, and is continuing to snowball. Small camp, small camp, mid wave, and you just rinse repeat. However, I will mention that some games your team isn't going to want to play the side lanes, and you should do so. So let's say your carry is something like Medusa or Luna, a hero that can't really push out into the side lanes very well, then you can actually be the guy to do that. Just make sure that you have your TP up if you're going to do that, because if you do commit to the side lanes and a fight breaks out, you do want to be able to show up. So let's say, once again, if you have one of these ranged heroes, a Drow, a Medusa, a Luna, a hero that just can't really push out, 
then be the guy to take the side waves. You can always Rolling Thunder TP to disengage. You have two defensive abilities. You clear waves quickly. In general, you're not going to die. So make that move. All right, in terms of his following items, there's a couple different things you can go depending on the game. Clearly this game, he's very worried about the magical damage that could come out. And you might be wondering, like, why even consider going BKB on a hero like Pango? That makes no sense. You have Rolling Thunder. The point is, is that it allows you to auto attack. It allows you to be the nuisance with the Diffusal Blade, right? Because when you have Diffusal Blade, you're easily able to generally solo kill supports, as we're going to see a beautiful initiation here. Anytime you can cleanly initiate with Rolling Thunder onto three heroes with follow-up, here's the follow-up, then you should do so. But yeah, as I was saying with the BKB, he's going to obviously pop it after the Rolling Thunder. It's going to allow him to stay in the fight for like 15 seconds, just bullying people completely out of the fight. Because with Shield Crash and a Disarm, you're not going to take damage from physical auto attacks for the most part, right? You're going to be able to prevent that from happening as long as you're aware of who's right clicking you. And so, yeah, you can just be crazy effective. But as we see here, a two man stun going in, completely chain stuns the Razor, takes out Matama Man, can follow up onto the backline here. One cool thing about the Diffusal as well is that when you're rolling through and so you're chasing someone, it should allow you to actually prevent them from sidestepping it as well. We'll see him go for the Diffusal onto the Void Spirit here. He obviously is going to dodge it with the Dissimilate, but you could see the idea against the majority of heroes. That is exactly what you would want to do as he bullies the Mars a little bit here. Actually fully committing in in this case. Oh boy. <laughs> You know, I, I, I did say go aggressive with the Diffusal Blade here, but this is, you know, this is a bit extreme from 9 going completely in. <laughs> Absolute menace to society. After this, I would generally recommend going for the Shard. A couple different items you can go as well, though, or Basher. Basher works with the Swashbuckle. I think Maelstrom could be okay in some games. MKB as well, if, if evasion is a problem. You can actually, especially after the BKB, go for something like an MKB and be the person to man up to something like a PA or, you know, a do so with a butterfly. It sounds crazy, I know. But the thing is, if they can't get rid of your disarm and it lasts for four seconds and you reduce their armor by eight, you're going to be able to man up. You will be able to. It, it You know, it, it works. So you just got to keep that in mind. And finally, let's end it off by talking about talents. At level 10, he took mana regen. At level 15, he took rolling thunder duration, which might seem a little bit weird. But the thing is, I think these players just value the, the ability to be not only a damage dealer, but also a control hero. You know, when you have something like a Tiny on your team um, and like a Snapfire and a Pugna as your supports, you have a lot of high DPS heroes around you. So you don't have to be the guy doing all the damage. And yeah, I really like th rolling Thunder Duration in games like that. If your team lacks damage for one reason or another, you can take Shield Crash, Cooldown and Ball. Um, it is obviously a good talent, just rolling Thunder Duration in a game like this is better. At level 20, I generally recommend the 20 strength. This is also really nice because let's say you do go something like Basher or MKB as your fourth item. At this point of the game, you're going to have your 20 strength talent. That's going to put you up to a very comfortable 2000 HP, you know, a number that to me feels like pretty hard to burst through, especially if you get your rolling thunder off or if you get your shield crash off, it's going to be very hard for you to die. And so then you can itemize more towards a right click item, whether or not once again, that is the MKB, uh, that is the Basher. It could also even be something like Scotty in certain games. Swashbuckle does apply that. That could allow you to easily man up to heroes like Morphling and Luna, which is kind of a cool take as well. So you definitely have options from this build as, as Pangolier. It's uh, quite cool in that way. At level 25, you might be thinking, oh, it's got to be the Rolling Thunder cooldown. The thing is, with this build, I think the Swashbuckle cooldown is actually in general better. When you have Diffusal and, you know, you're likely going to build into the Basher like I was talking about, most games you're going to have Basher as a fourth, fifth, or at least sixth item. The Swashbuckle cooldown is just too good. It's too consistent of a Bash, too consistent of, of Mana Burn. It's just one of those talents that really feels good when you take it. If you haven't taken it, you'll have to experiment with it. It feels fantastic. But nonetheless, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace! And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.